Hey, Bobby Trades. I wanted to do a video analysis update on these stocks. Don't worry, I'm not going to get uh, political, but I've noticed a lot of people have gotten uh, really political on message boards like StockTwits, places like FinTwit. Uh, we talk a lot, it seems recently, especially um, about the ethics of, of what some of these companies are involved in. And um, they're the, the very common topic kind of the, the buzzword of the late 2010s was ESG uh, inv investing, environmental, social governance uh, investing, and um, basically the idea that people should only invest in what they believe in, right? Well, the, you know, the next step of that would be, well, if you don't like a company and what they're doing, maybe you short it, right? You know, so that's kind of a mental trap that a lot of people fall into, and it's one, um, then not only, not only resonates with me, but it's one that I feel bad for, you know, because I know deep down in people's hearts, you know, when they say they want to boycott, you know, McDonald's or Starbucks or Disney, you know, or Amazon or Facebook, you know, that is coming from a good place. You know, I think most of the time, and I'm not just talking about this. I mean, <laughs> people talk about boycotting Facebook and Starbucks every five minutes, but, um, you know, the, the Israel Hamas, you know, I guess is what I'm supposed to be calling it now. Not the Israel-Palestine. The Israel-Hamas war, right? Um, I guess they killed all the Palestinians. But um, anyway, Starbucks and McDonald's uh, have, you know, released some statements on these. And so we can just read Starbucks, McDonald's, and other major companies have touched off controversy tied to the Israel-Hamas war. Uh, exemplifying the corporate challenges posed by the high stakes in politically charged conflicts. Starbucks sued its union, Starbucks Workers United, earlier this month after the labor organization posted a since-deleted message on X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, expressing solidarity with Palestinians. The message from the union triggered calls to boycott Starbucks, uh, when some appear to mistake the union's position uh, for that of the company. Okay, so and I've seen a lot of this on social media. Uh, people want to boycott, you know, these companies. People are pissed, right? And, and, and you know, people have been pissed at Disney uh, for a little bit recently. We can talk about that. But let, let's just stick to Starbucks and McDonald's because this is something that, you know, unfortunately, I know is kind of a... It's kind of just, it's kind of part of the game. I know it's so f to say, right? We're talking about you know Israel, Palestine, but like I just know in investing, this this is what they do. This is one of their tricks. This is one of their tricks, man. I'm just gonna say it. This is one of their tricks to get people out of great stocks and to to short great stocks. I've seen them do it. I know, and you know I I, I hear a lot of people. You know, they, they short stocks, they buy puts, they short futures, you know, because they're just kind of a-holes, right? They just want to call people dumb. Oh, uh, dumb money. Uh, this retail trader's bullish Apple. They've been saying that since 2013, 2014, 2015. The whole dumb money retail is bullish NVIDIA, right? And they're going to be calling people Tesla fanboys and Bitcoin maxis for a long time. All right, I don't give a damn when those people whatever anyway i i just uh <laughs> sorry um i don't need to vacuum that anyway there are a group of people though who i feel bad for uh people who you know they they hear something like you know starbucks and disney and mcdonald's have taken a you know pretty heartless stance towards the, you know, people of Palestine, um, or at least that's kind of what's being talked about, you know, read the articles for yourself, as obvious, as, as always, right, but we're going to talk about this idea, maybe this is one of the tricks, right, one of the tricks, anyway, I think that this is a wave one and a wave two for Starbucks, I think that this is a one, two, three, four, five waves impulse, uh, in an ABC correction, I could, you know, go subdivide this. And I wanted to do some of these live, but, you know, um, I'm sure, right, right before earnings, right, Starbucks is going down. And I'm pretty sure some of the headlines were, hey, you know, it's going down because they, they took this position. 
they're being boycotted, right? They think it's working. Nope. That's where we get the wave to, you know, possible little breakaway. And so I think this is, you know, wave one, wave two. What could this have been? Not just keeping retail out of a giant, uh, but getting retail short a giant, you know, and, and maybe from a, a well-intentioned place um, before Starbucks goes to uh, an all-time high. McDonald's, you know, come on now. This, this is not the one, you know, here, here, here's a weird, first off, that's pretty. Look at this, an ABC correction right at the 161.8% extension of the length of wave A placed the wave B high. Hmm. What was I going to say? Oh, I have this kind of weird rule. I think a lot of investors kind of have this rule. It's not always just about picking the best winner, right? Everyone wants to buy the best winner. I think that more of the filtering process is picking a good loser. What's that mean? What stock would I be comfortable losing money on and being like, you know what? Like that one didn't work out, you know, and, and there's a lot of ways that people screen, you know, for these types of setups and, and you know, fundamentals might be one where, you know, there's a lot of merit in saying which stocks not to short. And I'm not the fundamental guy. And, you know, I, I don't really, well, you know, I do. But anyway, this page isn't really mostly about that. You know, mostly it's my technical opinion, right? I try to keep it unbiased, right? Everyone knows, you know, Starbucks and McDonald's make a lot of money, you know, um, except for the bears. But anyway, 270.68. I think, you know, this is another one. It's almost a pattern. It's almost like a sector, right? It's almost like they've made a sector and they can make sectors in the blink of an eye. Remember in, you know, I'm not saying that they just remade the restaurant sector or the consumer staple sector or consumer disco. Um, but, you know, they, they just made, you know, the stay at home sector, a sector out of nowhere. Right. There wasn't there wasn't an ETF for stay at home stocks. And then all of a sudden, you know, if you didn't catch on to that, that it was reopening versus stay at home. You know, people got, you know, you can get, you know, whipped, you know, a lot of different ways. I'm not saying they just made a, you know, a, a sector of stocks that are being boycotted, right? These are all just consumer discretionary, consumer disco names, right? Um, but it is, it just did catch my eye that a lot of them, the reason, right, the fundamental reason for this wave two, wave B, you know, shall we say, you know, bear trap fundamental reason it's just taking place at a very interesting place on the chart. And it just seems malicious to me, man. We've already seen a lot of these, you know, turn around pretty quickly, you know. But McDonald's, again, another one, just like Starbucks, where, you know, not just keeping out people out, but po possibly, you know, getting a lot of bears to, you know, unfortunately, you know, do what seems like the right thing to do. You know, put money and investments where someone's heart is. Right. And, you know, hopefully. As you know, a, a lot of the companies, the, a lot of the funds that I'm thinking about buying right now, they're run by BlackRock. That's that's really the what I got most of my focus on right now. You think I love BlackRock? You think I, you know, hey, I, my buddy's at BlackRock. You know, of course not. Right. Um, anyway, I, I just think that's one of the traps. And, you know, I know for religious people, especially. You know, when you when you hear about what's happening and happening in Tesla's, you know, minds across the world, it's not good. You know, Disney. Let's see. Did they make a new low? Finally. OK, they finally made a new low. Um, all right. This has finally been invalidated. looks like that's what they're waiting for for a whole time. And, you know, this is a miss. I'll give that to the critics. Miss Calm. But man, they just went right down below that 2020 low. Um, and this was something that I brought up as a possibility before this happened. Also, I mean, what's DSO from Yield Max yielding right now? That's got to be 30 ish percent. Anyway.
All these yield max ETFs, man. I love you, yield max, but I know you're doing Elliott Wave. I know it. I know it, man. I can tell. You can always tell. Everyone likes to pretend they're not doing Elliott Wave. Yield max, come on now. The Disney and the Moderna and the Coinbase ETF. The only one y'all didn't do perfectly was NVIDIA. That pissed me off. Anyway. Still own NVIDIA, though. Anyway. Look at this. Come on, now. Look at this. Yield Max drops there 61. Come on, now. That's where you drop DSO? I love you, Yield Max. The... You know I'm your be your best friend, but you gotta hide it, man. Come on, you can't just let everyone know you're doing Elliott Wave. They're gonna think you're crazy. Look at that. These fund managers know what's going on, man. They're not dumb. They're really good people. They're my, you know, my best buddies. But look at that. We can do Moderna, too. I'm telling you, man. It's uncanny. It's uncanny. First off, AMD's dropped at the perfect time, too. I love Yield Max. This is all just a joke. I love Yield Max, but they dropped their funds at very interesting times. Very interesting times. Now, the only ones that that didn't happen to was Facebook and apples and nvidia's well i guess nvidia's was still a pretty good time but moderna's and disney to me is just uncanny like and coinbase's was a little uncanny too they dropped coinbase's at a very interesting time anyway uh they might be telling retail hey boycott disney boycott get out of this you know at a very interesting time uh, unfortunately uh, for Disney, the 10 year note. I don't know if I'm actually going to do this one, but people, they're using. Th this is the most common one. That's why I felt it was so important. This is why I felt it was so important because this is the most common one. Everyone's fallen for this, man. Everyone's fallen for this. I know it. Don't, don't be embarrassed. Everyone's fallen for short the market because our only hope is the Fed is going to be responsible. I know everyone's falling for it. I state my name. I, PT. I've fallen for short the market. Our only hope is that the Fed's going to be responsible. I've done it. It's a cold world, man. They'll use your anti-governmentness against you. I swear. You think I'm playing? They will use your anti-governmentness against you. They'll use my dyslexia against me too, it looks like. There. Anyway. 93. I made fun of someone with dyslexia one time. Man, I think that was just karma for, like, late onset. A lot of people in finance have dyslexia, and, like, the big mistake they make at some point in their, in their career is they transpose two numbers. Anyway, um, I think WD Gann was always talking about how the price and the time were, like, just the inverted numbers. Anyway, the old trick, the oldest trick in the book, short the market. Because we need the Federal Reserve to be responsible. And we know there's no chance in hell that's going to happen, man. It's an evil one. To be honest, I don't even quite know what the 10-year note is. Um, I know what the 10-year note is. But this is all people talk about, man. So I just thought I'd give my little, little take on it. Man, you know... They're actually doing everything right, except they just don't ever say the words required reserve ratio. That's the only thing, everything else I think they do right. 
People were talking about the reverse repos today, man. What is this? I'm telling you, they're programming y'all for late 2019. Because that's exact. it's the exact same script. The budget, the looming government shutdown, and now everyone's talking about repos for some reason. Anyway, interesting 61.8 to 78.6% retracement for the 10-year. Um, we'll see. Jerome's in the house. Fortuna Silver. And a lot of people, you know, speaking of precious metals and stuff, you know, this one's a little messy. Um, but a lot of people, you know, speaking on the lines of the Fed, that's their reason, you know, for being in silver and the metals, you know, um, in crypto even. And I, I think all oh, that's not a good idea either. You know, uh, that's certainly a trap. Um, anyway, one, two, three, four, five waves up for FSM and ABC correction. Um, some people will have problems with, you know, silver mining stocks and, you know, we're just mining the earth for materials and, and a lot of them are necessary materials, I guess. But, you know, the ones that we're just mining to keep in vaults, I mean, that's probably not good for the environment anyway. Right. And a lot of these in the, the other alternatives for a lot of these, you know, aren't so good either. I mean, we got to fuel the environment. But anyway. Uh, Fortuna Silver. You know, some people think this is a really great thing, keeps the Fed and, you know, fiat accountable. Some people say, you know, and, and while people are having these moralist debates, I think this is just, I don't think the MMs have this moralist debate. You know, I, I can tell you they're very interested in the three strike straddle and the two and a half strike straddle um, on this name. They're not interested in having an ethics class. Anyway. Google, man, I really should have cleaned this one up. Um, you know, and, and really the, the whole gist of the count is to show you guys what madness looks like. Anyway, um, good Lord, man. I must have had way too much fun one night with this. Anyway, 141.22. My God, to stop doing that. There's a few ways to look at Google, and this is one of those classic one, two, three, four, five debates. Okay, so that probably didn't make any sense, right? But what what, what would a kind of bearish, what would a bear say from an Elliott Wave? And by the way, that's the only thing that a bull ever asks themselves. I never, I always know the bull, duh, you know, I always know the bull count, right? The bear count is what I spend most of my time thinking about and reviewing and debating and that's really where the analysis comes from right so what would a bear say right well they're gonna say this is one two three four five right and this is a very classic debate uh in elliott wave right when this kind of five wave structure is formed and a lot of people get the wrong message okay so wave five in elliott wave you know it's tough it's the toughest part of elliott wave the, the best part is actually the part that everyone hates, which is wave one and wave two. That's the best part. Wave one, wave two, wave one, wave two. That's the best part. But why don't people like it? Because it's five or six months, takes time. It's it really, you know. But this is one, two, three, four, five waves, right? So the bare argument is going to be that this is wave five that's ended, okay? So if that were the case, this is wave five that ended what would the subsequent argument be? Well, the subsequent argument would be that this is wave A, this is wave B, and this is wave C. Now, here's the thing. One, I do an awful lot of evidence to show why I don't think this is right. But let's just talk about if it were right, okay? And this is where I can kind of tell you what the future would be like. If this were to happen, how many Elliott Wave theorists that are gonna, they're, they're all predicting this exact same thing, probably with every tech stock, I just have to imagine, right? This is five waves up, so this is an A, B, C correction, that's wave A, that's wave B, that's wave C, right? How many Elliott Wave theorists, if they were right, and that wave C did happen, would actually come down here and say, okay, that's wave two, T time to buy, would they? No, 
okay? So this is a really important thing to understand when a wave five could be in progress is that sometimes they will end this wave five and go ABC. So the rule always when this does happen is to just subdivide wave five and almost treat it like a brand new count. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to tweet, uh, treat this wave five like it's a brand new wave. I don't know anything else about this count now. All I need to know is what could be going on from this low, even if this is the wave five. Because wave five can be big. Wave five, especially for an impulsive kind of growthy volatile thing, can be a big cookie. So this could be wave one of wave five and wave two of wave five. There's a one, two, three, four, five wave subdivision, and it looks like wave two could have ended at the 61.8 to 78.6% retracement. The whole reason I brought up Google into all this and, and Facebook too is because a lot of, and I, I'm pretty sure this was Google, but Amazon, Facebook, a lot of these stocks, if you go look at their super cycle lows, I mean, Facebook and Amazon, it, it's just kind of mean. Like, it, it really is just kind of mean. If you look at Facebook and Amazon, this, this is just, this is who you're dealing with. I mean, this is really like, who investors and, and people are dealing with, you know, like, you know, people think they're hard and they're tough and, you know, they're gangsters. These people who run the market are gangsters. <laughs> these, you know, these, these people are savages. Look at this. They have this low from 2018, right? Oh, and by the way, 78.6% retracement of all time cycle, right? But they got this low from 2018. Every retail trader and their mother is going to use is going to use as a stop, right? This low from 2018. And so then they almost intentionally run down and go break that stop, right? I mean, this is this is Wyckoff. I mean, if someone ever, this is, this should be on the poster, on the wall of every single person who was a Wyckoff person. This is Wyckoff. Just give them that stop and then just go say F them. Just go break it right at the 78.6% retracement, man. And then while they're doing this, they're letting everyone know this V rally is going to be because they're just laying off tons of people. They're reminding you of that for Amazon, for Google, for Shopify, for, I think Roku was in this, all of them, these big super cycle loads that could have been put in, that could have been put in. We are constantly reminded that they're being put in because this company just slashed its workforce and laid everyone off during, you know, what a lot of people are calling a recession, you know, for the middle class and, you know, and, and think about how many of those people were willing to go along with all of Facebook's nonsense during the jab period, all of that. They were really, they were willing to like do anything for this company, build it from the ground up. And now we're just being told, we're being constantly reminded that the reason that this stock has quadrupled and all these fat cats are making all this money is because it, it's a layoff, man. So this is why I think like ESG investing, I get it, you know, and, and maybe one day in a perfect world, but in my experience, it's a trap. You know, Ethereum, Simpsons episode, wanting to get some crypto in here, right? The Simpsons make a lot of predictions. You know, they also, their episode was actually the plot of one of my tweets, right? So if you think I write for the Simpsons, I don't. One of their recent episodes was about putting people in the blockchain. And I have a literal tweet that says that's exactly their plan. Put you in the blockchain. They have a patent for it, 2019. You can look it up. Uh, Microsoft's patent, right? Bill Gates, the jab guy, he also, he also paid someone for what, probably $250,000, $300,000 to go write a patent about putting Bitcoin inside you or whatever, some cryptocurrency inside you, and you're going to become a node in the blockchain, right? So if you know how uh, blockchain works, their big, their big, uh, their big thing they want to do is they want to make you a node in the blockchain. And we, when we talk about efficiency and you know, the, the mining um, process of crypto being too clean. You know what the real solution is? Humans can link with the blockchain, become nodes, and then that's how we can mine crypto efficiently and incorporate it into our society. That's where all this voter fraud stuff is coming from. That's where the jab stuff comes from. And the medical histories that they had, they were, they were going to pretend that they were going to have every person outside of Walmart, you know, have, have their medical card checked. That was never the plan. That was never the plan, ever that they were going to have you your, your jab ID get checked. The real reason they're doing this is because they're going to bring all this stuff back, and this time the jab ID is going to take the form 
a blockchain. We're going to be, if you don't join this, you're not going to be in society. All right. I, you know, and, and people are debating, you know, they're having this nonsensical Fed debate. I mean, I posted about Ethereum recently. Um, almost above that high. Jesus. Solana and Ethereum back token. Um, I'm oh, sorry that that probably wasn't true. I don't know. Any, sorry, I'm not. I am not the guy who like gets deep into each of those these cryptos and knows which one of them all. So just disregard that. There's plenty of people for that, and and, and that's probably going to be a really important thing. I've even honestly looked at the fact. You know, I'm even starting to get into the risk point where I think about uh, not actually owning this on the blockchain exchange risk. You know, and I've even looked at um, you know, some of these. They have wallets that are. You know, essentially like treasure chests, they have like a like a literal wallet that can store your crypto. It's like a cold. I've been looking at stuff like that. Anyway, uh, we're not quite at that part of the cycle. Uh, Solana, lots of interesting uh, evidence. One, two, one, two, wave three of wave three, new higher high on the RSI. You know, Elliott Wave is going to suggest that's a shallow wave three, wave four, wave five. Eventually, that high gets broken. Um, it, it is all the Elliott Wave, you know, suggests in the, in the short term. Posted about, oh, didn't mean to have the voodoo out. Um, there's actually someone who's better at voodoo uh, and, and Tesla right now than me. Algo underscore 382. You know, I don't mean to. Algo 382 on Twitter. He, I think he smoked this. Um, he, 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 he has a bigger sack than me, you know, and he went out and posted this was a 1212. Um, I didn't quite update it in time, but I think, I think he's going to be correct. And this is also my bias. This is wave one and wave two. This is another wave one, uh, in ABC correction wave two. So Paul, um, you know, one of my favorite Finchwit users, uh, certainly, um, I think, you know, one of the best Elliott wave theorists in the community. Um, but he one, two, one, two, if you're watching this, Paul, you know, I agree with you. Um, I think we're going to enter wave three of wave three. Right now, 183.81 is a little tight, is a, is a little wide, sorry. Tight is just kind of picked the low, 194.07. Paul, man, oh, man. God damn it. He outdid me on Tesla, man, really? Come on, now. Paul, ugh. He, he called this a wave too, man. This guy has, on Tesla, oh man. I think he's right about that too. Anyway, um, <coughs> we'll see. Solar Edge and First Solar. Don't think these are very controversial. Um, well, you know, some people think, you know, they invest in these because they are, you know, the right way to do it. Anyway, uh, all that really is going on for First Solar in, in Solar Edge and Enphase Energy. I'm still uh, holding Enphase Energy. I took a small uh not a small like a half position um what i call it for in phase it, it's got a very similar chart um but i am looking for uh the esg sector um to recover i don't invest in esg or tesla or any of that um because i think it's good for the world or any of that i mean tesla they're probably gonna play out the, pl the plot of robocop and you know robo taxi we'll see <laughs> anyway just a little humor, relax. Anyway, um, 389.71. They do have, like, <laughs> I'm waiting for these robot dogs they got. They got these robot dogs. I'm telling you, man. I can't talk about Zometica because it's too small, and I don't think I'm going to buy it. But that's just, that was one of those pandemic stocks, and I've been looking at its, uh, chart like damn are they gonna hook up the animal brains to the ai that'd be sweet and play out the plot of a lawn mower dog and rick and morty anyway um solar edge sedg one two three four Real, look at this RSI. One, two, wave three, highest high, shallow wave four. I mean, that's textbook. Wave five ends with Momo. 
Now we're at the 78.6% retracement between the 100% to 161.8% percent extent um, extension. Hope that came out right. Um, of wave A, place at the wave B high. So I'm looking for, right now there's no like level to trade against. I mean, pick the low, you know, 63.25, you know, not, not really. A lot of wave theorists wait for um, an impulse to form. I'm just trying to show, I think it's kind of in the hot zone. I wanted to talk about, you know, solar a little more. Uh, the, he, he, whenever, uh, he gets a stock that goes below his stop loss, uh, he stops talking about it. Okay, um, I'll let you think about that one. Oh, wait, so when the stock does do what I say, I keep talking about it more because I was correct about it. So I'm letting the winner run. Anyway, um, uh, I manage risk with position size. I also know, um, you know, if a sector does fall, uh, which ones I'm going to be buying, uh, more of it to discount anyway. One, two, three, four, five for Solar Edge. Wave two, wave three, kind of pretty. Wanted to get a little bit of evidence. I mean, I don't get them all right. Um, you know, this sector has not. Um, it, it just takes a while. I mean, Tesla, you know, the, the Tesla's been going on for years. I mean, this was when Tesla started, you know, right around this range. And I even remember someone saying that they were really bored. When's Tesla going to move in this range when it was just kind of flagging up here? And it's almost the same thing on a fractal scale. Anyway, one, two, one, two. I know it's crazy, and it probably is crazy. Below 194.07 to 183.81. Anyway, first solar. I like using the wave one high, you know, uh, I like this wave one high right here. 123.01, oh, that's a little tight. Uh, you know, they're making, and, and none of these have really formed impulses from this low yet, um, but I do think that this sector is, you know, Tesla's probably got the best stop and invalidation right now. But I think so, first solar and uh, solar edge give a little bit of evidence of what some call a dumpster dive. Um, it's it's in free fall right now. Um, no lows formed for a lot of these, you know, or that are very useful. Um, but I think there's a lot of evidence from this one. One, two, one, two. So I predicted there was going to be a large wave three of wave three. And I, I expect that we're still in that. This is wave one of wave three, wave two of wave three, wave three of wave three, shallow wave four, wave five of wave three, you know. 121.59 is a little tight. Um, we'll see if first solar and solar edge and Tesla, you know, give a little better, you know, lows to be against. But anyway, I think Tesla's got a pretty good low to be against. Anyway, uh, wanted to do a little bonus chart, you know, talked about some controversial stuff in this video, but, you know, stick to stocks. All right. You know. I don't think this one's involved in any crazy controversies, at least to my knowledge. I mean, I probably should have talked about the gambling sector. You guys think that's good? Good for people? We're going to you know, see all those gambling stocks do well. MGM, Las Vegas Sands, right? DraftKings already leading that sector. Woo, isn't that great? Everyone we love is going to be hooked on gambling and sports. Uh, but puppy, uh, why do you care about telling people how sports are rigged energy harvesting rituals? They're only about to make everyone you know and love addicted to gambling. Okay. I'll stick to stocks on that one. Um, speaking of stocks. You know, I don't know. I always said I wouldn't go to the line of gambling, but I, I think some of these, they let their... They just let their guard down and, you know, they, they make they make them too easy. And I know how some of these odds work. Like if they had like a 46 ritual or a, you know, 35 ritual or something like that, I'd be able to sniff it out, see how they were going to line it up, maybe see who's going to get a touchdown that game. 
Over 172.05. No parlays yet. 